Hello everyone. I hope we all are doing good. So today we'll be discussing about uh, a very interesting topic. Uh, we call it how to read a research paper. Now the point of making this video and why I'm making a video on this topic is very interesting. See, uh, we are in a decade of, or we can say we are in we are in an era of evidence-based practice. Okay. So we need to apply research into practice or we need substantial evidence for whatever we are practicing. We need support for whatever we are practicing. As an evidence-based practitioner, we should know what we are basically applying. Second and the foremost thing is how to read a research paper is important for students. It's important for postgraduate uh, trainees when they're doing thesis or when they're writing papers. Because unless and until you know how to methodologically evaluate a paper, critically appraise a paper, it's very tough uh, to uh, understand what the research, how the research quality is. The other, other, other important thing is whenever in nowadays we are having thousands and thousands of journals uh, in our field as well as in other fields, and it's very tough to read everything in in everything. So it becomes a very cumbersome job to download all those articles. So if we follow a, a methodological, a sequential step of how to read paper, it it will be a little easier for us to understand and to document and to write and to evaluate the the research. On an average, I think we are we are producing n numbers of papers. So should I read everyone? So it's very difficult to catch up with the evidence. It's very difficult even when you're writing a dissertation or you're writing a paper it's very difficult to catch up with all the evidence so what should i read how should i read is what we are going to discuss today okay so let's go into it and let's have a discussion about it so before reading any paper uh, i think you should be clear about what are the basic components of paper Apart from this, you should always be thorough about the type of research articles. Okay, so I'll make uh, the point of here is once you know what are the components of, of a paper, it's easy for you to evaluate the paper. Okay, My, you might be knowing, okay, these are the components. So I need to, I need to go this first. I need to go, I need to read results first or maybe uh, the discussion first. On, and you know what is methods about what i am expecting in results what i am expecting in discussion what i am expecting in introduction so you basically have an overall idea okay this paper is not having objectives in the introduction section or it has not described the results in results section so you will get an overall idea how the manuscript was written is it of a good quality or not so overall idea you will get if you know about the components of paper so this is the basic components i'll just um, brush through it we all have seen it. So the order sections of the manuscripts are as follows. Now this can vary according to different journals, but usually uh, this follows. This is, uh, and when the paper is published, I think the tables come uh, in the results section, but when we submit, the tables are away from the section or we submit it separately. So we have a title page, we have an abstract, we have an introduction, we have methods where we describe how the research was done. We have a result section and we have discussion of course very important part of the paper we have references where we can look up for what was used in the study and what was not used in the study and of course we have some appendix if it's a systematic review maybe search strategies are documented there or maybe uh, some scales or you know, some different strategies with the, with the researcher used and want to share with the community so whenever you look at a paper, uh, I want all of us to download a paper and go through it and see what are the components of the paper. This is the first and the foremost thing in reading a research paper. We should be thorough about what are the different components of it. So I'll try to highlight what are the different components. Okay, so let's look at an example. I think it will make little more things easier. This is a paper I was reading recently. The effect of a single high velocity low amplitude hip mobilization on strength in subjects with the injuries. So this was a paper published in uh, Musculoskeletal Science and Practice. Now, how do I know where it is published? What are the different components of the paper? So <clears throat> the first and the foremost thing that you can look for is the journal name. 
and here you can see the journal name is musculoskeletal science and practice now if i want i can look up for the journal quality what are the, what is the sjr of it how is the journal rated it's a q1 journal where it is indexed all those informations i can easily fetch using internet the other thing i need to look at is what is the title because title is the window to the article once i read the title if it is interesting then only i'll i'll go into the article or i'll delve into the article or i'll try to read it third is the author details okay who has published this where this was work was actually conducted so you can basically see again uh, they have a title we have author's details where you can look for the other important thing is abstract okay which have which is basically a summary and should be very tightly written because uh, this is the first thing which comes uh, in handy to the uh, reader and this is the first thing which i'll always look in in an article now I, I this is the strategy which i'm going to discuss is basically what i have been following might be different for you but the overall idea remains the same that we are basically trying to appraise a paper so we'll go in now this is a, okay so now i want and i'll say uh, that basically i always read the abstract first okay there has been a lot of discussions on this that the abstract should not be uh, used as a window to the paper but i so much of studies are there it's very difficult for me or anyone to catch up with everything so what i basically do is i read the title if the title is related to me the second thing i do is read the abstract now this i have taken basically from uh, this this section basically is i have taken from the pubmed so you can easily get this section from the pubmed and you can get background of the basic uh, idea of the paper so let's uh, start what i'll be reading first what i'll not be reading okay so what to read first so uh, first we have to skim through the paper so what basically i do is i screen the paper how do i screen i screen it using abstract abstract should be the window for the paper so i read the title it's interesting i read the abstract it has substantial uh, substantial uh, quality it has substantial things or it has substantial information that i was looking for so then i'll be going into the article so always try to screen the articles using abstracts and i have showed you a video uh, of image on the last slide you can use pubmed abstracts are available there you can download articles and read the abstracts it's your wish pedro provides pub, uh, abstracts so different databases provide abstracts so you basically just read the title read the abstract and then decide whether i'm going to uh, devote my time to it or not whether this paper uh, uh, is important to me or not whether this paper is important to my patient uh, care or my research whatever okay so this is what i follow and uh, basically you can also follow the same and i think uh, the novice peep uh, researcher should follow this uh, this format so what what after so first i was reading the title then the abstract so once i'm interested in the abstract i know this time this paper is useful for me i download it and i read the introduction section okay introduction will basically tell me okay so this study was done because of this so background basically tells me why they have done a particular study and i should be very thorough and clear why they did a particular study see if you could not find the uh, the introduction uh, telling you why the study was done okay it's very difficult uh, to appreciate the, why they are doing a particular thing okay next comes the discussion so from introduction i shift to the discussion uh, and i try to see whatever they wanted to do now they are discussing in uh, the discussions discussion section then i shift to the methods methods bill is the heart of the paper or i think results and methods together makes the the chunk of the paper and tells us how the study was conducted what are the methods that are used it's what was randomized blinded what exactly was done so that i can use it similar things in my paper or maybe if i'm using it uh, as, as a part of my thesis what basically i need to see into it results basically will tell me about 
uh, the um, findings. So here I need to look up the stats, I need to look up the tables, I need to look up at the captions of the table, I need to look up at the value. Uh, are they real? Um, what um, changes have happened in the, in the data from the baseline to the, uh, the, the uh, post treatment or what was the uh, findings basically of the, of the study? So usually try going into the introduction, try to find out why the study was done try to see discussion what how they are discussing the findings if you find it interesting you find that okay this is the paper i need to read go in the methods and the results section okay so sometimes what i do is when i read methods i found uh, maybe he has used a test okay a diagnostic test real-time ultrasonography for example i don't know about it so what i do is i do a google search i look up for the paper uh, for the for the methods uh, then I again come back and try to delve into the paper. It's very important and I have been using this strategy a lot. Whenever I read a paper, I make notes uh, on the paper or on, on, on a copy. It should be hard, uh, hard notes, not soft notes, because whenever you are going to, especially for the students, when you are going to write the paper, it will prove very, 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 very helpful to you, uh, these notes, because uh, again and again, reading the same paper will make it uh, a bit difficult. So this is the basic strategy I use. Okay, you can use your own strategy, but if you find the paper uh, needs time, uh, then uh, please devote time to the paper. Okay, so as I told you, the introduction this will tells you the background of the study and why the study was needed, and it's important to know about it. And whenever you're writing, also make sure that in the background section you are basically telling uh, why you did a particular study. Results and discussions, these are heart of the paper, so read them carefully, try to see were the tables necessary, were the diagrams necessary, um, uh, what stats they have basically used, were they necessary, is everything uh, fitting into the picture or not. Discussions again will tell you basically about why uh, they find a particular findings, uh, what was the rationale behind the findings, is it correct or not, has to be a break. Okay, last but not the least is the methods and uh, this is very important for people who are doing, uh, who are writing a paper. This basically will tell you, okay, I can repeat this experiment or maybe I can take some points from this experiment into, into my study. So this is how they did work and you only get to this point if you're really interested, really, this is very important. If you're really interested and need to understand exactly what was done okay in order to understand the, the data and its interpretation okay so let's make sense of everything and just summarize it so i downloaded a paper and uh, i read the title i found it interesting i delve into the uh, abstract i found it uh, okay this is the paper which is reflecting my patient or this is the paper which needs to be used in my study so i went down and i read about the introduction section and i found okay the study background is very solid this this study has to be done or needed to be done then i went into the discussion sections and i uh, and i and i read what was the rationale why they found a particular um, uh, findings what, and once i'm satisfied with that and i think okay this paper needs my time uh, i go into the uh, into the methods sections and into the uh, result sections and this will basically tell me how they did the work this will tell me the scientific rigor of the paper this will tell me the internal validity of the paper how the research was done whether whether there are confounders whether, whether there are problems in the paper or not now uh, the last thing which i want to say to you is uh, there are various tools available for appraising a, a paper okay so you can use those papers to appraise a paper but they will just give you a number okay the quality has to be uh, understood by reading the paper so it's very important that you give a paper at uh, the time it needs if it is important to you so i hope i make some sense uh, in describing this strategy this is what i have been using reading a lot of papers uh, in the past few years and i have been using the strategy write papers and understand papers and even use it for my students so i hope you all find this interesting uh, uh, thank you so much for listening in the next video we'll try to make how to appraise paper and we'll try to make a video on how uh, what are the different types of articles so this basic discussion holds true for um, every type of article it may be it's a systematic review and and so on 
okay so thank you so much for listening uh, i hope everybody understood thank you so much